Welcome back to Apps Every Day, and today we're talking about Darkroom. Now, I've talked about Darkroom in the past, but on the iPhone, and so I wanted to share what the computer version looks like because it's relatively new, and I'm obsessed with Darkroom, and if you've ever used uh, Adobe Lightroom, then you may be a fan of this as well because uh, it's certainly a lot cheaper, and I don't know, I just really like the company and the developers behind it. You should follow them on Twitter. All their links will be in the description below so you can check them out. But once you get it downloaded, let's see what it looks like here. So we're going to get a pretty basic uh, setup here, but I really like the layout. It's I'm, you know pretty self-explanatory, not far off from other uh, editing applications. You basically get access to your library. You have your existing albums uh, that sync up with like your iCloud accounts. And it basically just looks at your photos app and allows you uh, to take a look at that. So if I were to go into one of my photos, I can see a little R icon. This tells me it's a raw photo. So if I select that here, I still have a look at my library over here. So if you did a bunch of like shots of the same item that you want to quickly kind of sift uh, through, then you can do that on the left hand side. At the top, we're going to get some flagging options. Uh, so you can pick your favorites, you can reject them, uh, you can favorite this, and then you have a nice little menu button so you can export it once you've made some edits, you can hide it, delete it, do a whole bunch of different things. And you have, of course, a delete option right here. As well as to the right, you do have a quick export. So basically it does the same thing. Now on the right hand side, this is where we have all of our editing functions. So as soon as I select one, we can see controls start to pop up. And it's a really powerful system but also very simple and straightforward. I just think it's a really well-designed uh, program. And if I make it full screen here, we can just really appreciate the real estate that we have to look at the image. So of course, a lot of the stuff is pretty basic, right? You have your crop and straight in um, your different aspect ratios. Maybe you're posting it to a specific place and they have a ton of aspect ratios, literally like, I think anything you can think of. And I like how the popular ones are even labeled. If And of course, if I don't like that, which of course don't want to crop it like that, uh, then I can hit reset. But I do kind of like that little tilt action going on. Now, next up we have our filters. And if you've watched my mobile version, you know how much I love this because uh, it comes with a ton of them. I am not aware because I'm an early adopter uh, I have access to all of these. If it's like the mobile version and if it was free to download, I believe you have access to a couple from each category and then the rest are under like the paid uh, programming. But here I'll give you a little taste. Uh, these basically are a bunch of different like film stocks and obviously, you know, some work with other photos, but this flat lay stuff doesn't always work with everything. That one doesn't look half bad. So let's say we put on something like this and then we're gonna come back to these controls, but let's just say I make a bunch of like just really crazy stuff. Uh, chair, white, blacks, blah. Oh, that looks terrible, but you'll see what I'm doing in a second. So I go back to here and then what I can do is at the bottom actually hit create new filter. It's gonna allow me to name it so I can do my background or whatever I want to name it, I can hit create. And now it creates this new folder uh, called uh, my filters and it saves all that. So again, if I were to go to maybe the next photo or something, I could just apply this and it's going to, and it's going to apply the same edits uh, that I did. And everything in here is non-destructive. So maybe I applied the filter, but you know, this is a little too bright rather than it just being a slapped on filter that I can't adjust, of course I can go in and make adjustments specific to this photo, which is really, really nice. And of course, if I click on it, I can, you know, blend it. I can rename the filter, update it. If I go in and like, ooh, I forgot to add, um, you know, some curves or anything like that. And I end up making more adjustments to it. I can go back here and just hit update filter and now it's going to have those curve adjustments built into it 
And of course I can delete the filter as well uh, if I don't really like it. The custom filters is, you know, nothing terribly unique, but the way it's set up, I just really, really like it. Cause a lot of times I'll take pictures in the same area and I love just being able to apply the same filter to a whole collection of images and then just go in and make specific uh, changes as needed. So again, this looks super ugly, so I'm actually gonna reset it here. And I'm going to go back to the original with no filter on. So this is gonna be the pretty uh, recognizable exposure and color changes. So you have all your usual stuff in here, right? I will say on their mobile versions, they did add a brand new clarity slider, which is really, really powerful. It doesn't look fake. So that's on the iPhone and iPad if you wanna check it out there, but it doesn't look like they've added it to the computer version just yet. So you do have a sharpness option, but that clarity option uh, doesn't look to be here as well. And then you're gonna have your hue versus hue, hue versus saturation type stuff. This I actually use a lot because iPhone photos tend to have a yellow shift to it. So I usually click on one of these depending on the image and I like to bring down the saturation. This photo isn't all that bad, but a lot of uh, them definitely have like this warmer cast to it that I like to get rid of. Now down here, you do have a nice little framing options. I don't really use this a whole ton, uh, but you know, depending on where you're putting it, maybe you're printing it somewhere, uh, you can put a little blur border on it, adjust the colors, anything like that. And finally here, we have kind of the history. So this uh, allows us to see all of the changes we've made. Uh, and we've made a lot of useless stuff here, especially the last uh, frame color change there when I was clicking a million times and it will actually tell you what uh, you're picking and you can actually jump back in history to any of these so see how this is bright white these are now kind of grayed out so now since I clicked on this contrast or if I choose shadows it's going to be the shadows as the last edit that I made so everything prior to it up to the thing that I am choosing so same with strength if I want to reset adjustments, it'll go back there. So this can be helpful if you're making a ton of edits and you get to a point in which you're happy, but you still want to play around further. You can always jump back um, without having to just hit undo a bunch or, you know, just kind of guess where you undoed to. So that's really nice, as well as a really powerful thing here is I can see at the bottom there's copy, paste, and reset. So similar to creating your own filter, if you don't wanna save a filter specifically, but you made a bunch of changes, you can actually copy those edits and then again, go to another one. And now you'll see the paste option uh, highlighted here. I'll hit paste. And if I go to like this wacky looking one here, I'll go to the better one. Uh, yeah, so we can see we have up until the applied filter so now down here at the bottom, I can see copy, paste, and reset. So if I actually hit copy, it's gonna copy all the edits to this point. And again, I can choose another one here. And I can see the paste option is available at the bottom. So I'll hit paste. And I can see it applies though, and it applies those edits. Uh, it does show up as pasted edits, so it doesn't copy the whole history. However, uh, everything that I adjusted in here is the same. Now, if you wanna see a quick before and after, so what it looked like at the beginning, you have this little option here. You basically just click and hold as long as you want. And when I click and hold it, it shows me the original. When I let go, obviously I see my current uh, edit. And you have a little info button down here, which is gonna give you some EXIF data on the uh, image itself, where it was taken, what it was taken on, and all the fun, nerdy stuff that camera data gives us. And whenever you're happy with the edit, of course, you can hit export, and you have a couple options. I can actually go under my settings and change my export options. So if you want something super high quality, you can change it to a TIFF format. And uh, I for and oh yeah, I totally forgot to mention that uh, Darkroom actually fully handles videos as well. So if I go up to this clip right here, and so it's actually really cool and crazy powerful if you think about it, is you make changes as the video 
uh, plays back in real time. So I'm applying different filters, seeing what I like. I can go in here. I want to up the exposure, the contrast, take down the sharpen. I can add like a ton of grain, I guess, make this look like you know, some old footage, maybe add a cool vignette. It's a little cool it on the grain. And I just think that's really incredible that you can literally make live edits to a video as it's playing back. Uh, pretty, pretty cool. But anyway, back to the export thing. Yes, you can uh, change all the formats for that stuff. And I'm going to change this to high quality because I don't know. I'm just like that. I don't like exporting low quality stuff. You can remove embedded location stuff. So especially if you're posting it online or sending it to somebody that um, you may not like fully trust or something, you can remove the embedded location. And then you can even overwrite the existing copyright and add in your own. You can watermark stuff, which is really impressive. And yeah, some cool export settings there. So yeah, you can save it. Uh, this will replace it in your library. You can see that it overwrites that here. So most of the time what I'll do is save a copy and that automatically creates a new version um, that I can see at the bottom. Now, if you're on the computer like we are now, what you can do is save a copy too, and that's a, going to allow you to export it to a specific folder on your computer. So if you're, you know, if you're not working with this library entirely, uh, syncing back to your iCloud, then you can save it somewhere on your computer differently. And you can choose to check this box and have a predetermined inset frame of 4%. Uh, again, I don't really do that, so I leave it unchecked, but it's cool to have the option there. So there you have it, guys. That is Darkroom on the Mac. Let me know what you guys think about it down in the comments below. And, of course, everything will be linked down in the description as well. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.